Here at the Henry Lawson High School, like many schools, we looked at our data and we found that numeracy was an ongoing problem, that even our growth from Year 7 to Year 9 wasn't as good as it could be. So we've developed a plan that has three prongs. Firstly, we're looking at the work of our maths teachers and supporting them. We're looking at the work of classroom teachers in all KLAs and making sure that they're embedding numeracy within their programs. And thirdly, and in lots of ways most importantly, we're working with our partner schools and developing really strong relationships and developing programs across those transition points. In Italian we've looked at comparison in particular. And I chose to do Italian transport and we have to do, we have to do a numeracy activity comparing a Holden Commodore to an Italian car of our liking. And I chose the Lamborghini Diablo. Yeah, so and we had to make a table with the name of it, the engine size, fuel, fuel economy, the price and the weight. And what the kids have been able to find out about that is they've really broadened their knowledge about how different makes of cars work and how different European types of cars, sports cars, uh, work. That, that, that has made a lot of meaning to the boys and they now look at things like fuel economy much more seriously, especially with our price of petrol that we have these days. In our mathematics department, they're very highly skilled and trained and articulate teachers and they've really worked hard on making their learning in the classroom more relevant for students, embedding a whole range of tools including technology to make mathematics more relevant. Coming back off maternity leave, I found it really interesting coming in and all of a sudden I had this smart board in my classroom so I sort of had to learn how to use it. Um, but the more I've used it, the better I've found. I've becoming more familiar with applications such as GeoGebra, um, such as using the mathletics and the activities that they have organised on their site. Um, also, using it just in terms of graphing, I've been using the OneNote program because I can bring up a grid on the screen, I can um, graph straight lines on there, draw up my number plane, X and Y axes really easily and um, the students have done a little bit for themselves too. Um, the tedious work of drawing up tables of values, we can now just create a table on the smart board and it's there. Um, and depending on what year it is, the students can do that on their laptops as well. Okay, so we've got a minimum temperature, we've got a maximum temperature, you've applied conditional formatting to them, so you've been able to have it going from the blue where it's coldest to the red where it's hottest. Okay, so you've shown that well. What do you need to do with this information now? What sort of graph? A line graph, because a line graph will show us the rise and fall of the temperature best, won't it? Yesterday we started talking about trigonometry and we spoke about trigonometry being the measure of triangles or specifically triangle measurement. So what we're going to do now today is to start having a look at some of the specific parts of trigonometry. So that involves what we call a series of ratios and those ratios have different names. We're going to look at the sine ratio, the cosine ratio and the tangent ratio. Okay, so how many halves can you have in the bar for four boots? We have um, four stage four classes and each of them do different novels um, but what we had in common was the journey within each novel and so we thought that the, the next um, practical way of approaching the concept of journey was to think um, along a numer numeracy line um, so we thought we would uh, incorporate, before the kids even got to the story, before they even got to reading the novel, um, the idea of, of reading maps. We have a maths teacher that works in the primary department every day, does one hour every day working with classroom teachers and their role is similar to our mentor, that they're actually mentoring the primary teachers in this is how we teach maths in the secondary school or this is how maths can be taught because we are maths teachers and we have good skills and knowledge there. And that's been a really powerful program because the secondary teachers are developing a greater understanding of primary classrooms, but primary classrooms have been able to be upskilled on how more effectively to teach mathematics. We've adapted the Newman's analysis and come up with what we call a five-step problem prompt. And we've made that common across the primary school, well, across our partner school partner schools from kindergarten all the way up to year 12 
Um, we have a series of problem prompts that have been developed down in the primary school. They just simply present it in a slightly different way. They use more pictures and icons than what we do. And then in the high school we have our five steps of the problem prompts. But ultimately, we want our HSC results, our school certificate results and our NAPLAN results to show that the kids have made really good growth in their, their, their deep knowledge and understanding of mathematics and numeracy and how it fits into their lives.